The Future of Jobs report by the World Economic Forum states that 41% of current jobs in South Africa will be rendered obsolete due to automation. It also estimates that 65% of children entering primary school will find themselves in occupations that do not exist today. Yet seven out of 10 kids have no access to technology or the internet. When we talk about automation or of automation, we often talk about it as something that's very far. But is it really that far? Is it far? When I think of kids and what we often term as the future digital workforce, I often think of the Titanic. Strange, right? Titanic was a high marvel of its time. It was way ahead in terms of technology, quite advanced. And for those who did not know, Titanic had the ability to take salt out of the ocean water and make it drinkable. Now that was a ship way ahead of its time. When Titanic sank, it was chaos. People were crying for their lives, begging for a second chance to life. During that chaos, children were saved first. If one thing was clear, even during an era of a Titanic, is that children are the future. And if children are saved first when a ship sinks, why is it not the case in technology? When we talk about automation and robotics, we are talking about something that will directly affect the kids in the future. Now do we wait? until these kids are adults, or for this future to become our reality before we start exposing these kids to technology. We should start positioning them now, not only to be consumers of technology, but for them to be in a, in a position whereby they are able to contribute to technology. When I grew up, I was a consumer to technology. I never even imagined myself building my own technology-related solutions. I started school in a mud hut classroom, and we often had classes under a tree. It was in a village called Kwezana in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. Access to technology was very limited at the time. Fast forward 20 years later, access to technology is still limited. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to solve problems using computers. And becoming a mother to Mivuyo and Avenati drove me to a cause that said that wanted to commit into saying all kids deserve equal exposure to technology. Because I believed that coding and technology is love, or all kids deserve equal exposure, just like all kids deserve love. Love builds confidence. It makes great self-esteem and creates happy kids. And so does coding. The more I played around with technology, together with my kids, the more I realized that kids learn to express themselves using technology. And technology is a very powerful tool. I was then convinced that coding was not just a technical language, but it was a language that had the ability to connect us. 
It was after playing with my kids with technology that Kongwana was born in 2019. Kongwana was born because I believed that coding is love. And I wanted all kids to have equal exposure to technology and coding. Nwana means child in Sutu. And it was just for me being deliberate about the technological journey of the African child. And our main objective is to help the African child go digital through teaching them coding and computational thinking. When kids are taught how to code, they begin to have a better understanding of the world around them. Therefore, I want us today to introduce coding as a new African language. <laughs> I looked at Africa, our diversity, the different languages we spoke, if one thing connected us, irrespective of all this diversity that we share, it's technology. Whether you speak Zulu or Sutu, if we use technology, we speak one language. And while I was looking at Africa, I realized in as much as we're connected by this technology, that we shared similar struggles as a continent or we weren't progressing fast enough in terms of solving our problems with technology. And I had a rude awakening through a lady who was a babysitter to my kids. I watched her and how she struggled with access to technology. And I was reminded, I was taken back to a time when I struggled with access to technology at Quezana. I was taken to that moment. And when I was taken to that moment, I vowed to myself that I was going to do something about it. That I was going to introduce kids as young as three years old, as young as they are, to coding and computational thinking. Because I wanted kids to be better equipped in terms of solving our unique African, pro uh, African, African problems. We have an African proverb in Kosa that says, Bagojwa Beselula. Say it with me. Yes. And that means train them young. And I vowed to myself that uh, I was going to introduce kids to coding as young as they are in computational thinking. And a, lo a lot of you are probably sitting in your chairs today wondering, why is this a topic worth having? Why are we having this discussion? And why do we even teach kids computational thinking or coding? Computational thinking is a set of problem solving methods that allows us to analyze and execute problems and solutions in a manner that a computer understands. Well, I didn't realize that computers have a thinking muscle till I was almost an adult. In computational thinking, we have four principles. One of them being decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithms. And when we decompose a problem in computational thinking, or when we do decomposition, it's when we take one big problem and break it down into small problems. When I reflect on my journey as a child, I realize that my parents and my teachers were applying some principles of computational thinking. It's not something new. We have been doing it, but we we're just not deliberate enough about implementing it. Did you know 
did you know that when we do puzzles with our kids, with kids around us, that we are applying principles of pattern recognition? And in practical terms, one will ask why is pattern recognition important? In practical terms, how some of the COVID-19 variants were identified, it was using some principles of pattern recognition to say, we now have a Delta variant. Coding takes computational thinking a step further. It makes it practical, practical by allowing you to have a phone in your hand that you can interact with, and by allowing you to have tangible products that you can use that are built from the process of computational thinking. When kids are taught coding and computational thinking, they will be empowered to contribute in our economies in Africa and to help us fight and poverty through technology. And for us to get there, for us to start solving problems and contributing to the fight in ending po to poverty with technology, I want to take you to Kailicha. I want to bring it closer to home. Kailicha is one of the largest townships in South Africa. It's very vibrant, it's busy, very colorful, with zinc houses that are shining and so colorful. They are so close to each other that sometimes you can hear a conversation taking place three houses away from you. Now that's how close some of the houses are in Kailicha. I want you in Kailicha to meet Nozipo. Nozipo stays right at the, at, at the heart of this community. She's not a sad looking girl. She's a black, beautiful girl whose smile gives a beacon of hope. One winter day, Nozipo's home was caught up in a fire. And in this fire, or during the, this fire, Nozipo was able to, to escape with her father. As they are escaping the, uh, the fire with her father, they're trying to get help. The community gathers with buckets of water, trying to help save this home. And as this community is gathering with buckets of water, trying to save this home, Nozipo's dad is on the phone with emergency services. Emergency services is, is on their way, trying to locate where they are. They try to locate them, and some of the questions that they ask, where do you stay? It's a basic question that you ask. What is your street address? Eventually, the help gets to them. But when the help gets to them, it's too late. The help they need is not only the help of how to deal with the loss of a home. It's how to deal with the loss of a mother and a babysit sister who couldn't, who couldn't escape that fire. Why did they take so long? Why did they take so long? Because we stay in an informal settlement. We don't have physical addresses that make it easy for, uh, for emergency services to navigate to us. If only we had digital addresses, if only we had digital addresses, my mom and sister would have been alive. Nozipo's story highlights what's possible when we teach kids coding and computational thinking. Kids will be able to look around them, look at the problems that they face and come up with solutions to their problems. And why is it that we lose lives every day, that we encounter so many challenges in the African continent, when so much can be done through technology? Now the problem gets bigger when it comes to access to technology. I want us to leave Kailicha and go back to Kwezana, where I started school. And meet Andile, who stays in Kwezana, in the same community I started school in. Andile doesn't have 
a computer at home. There is no electricity where he stays and no internet. Teaching coding to Andile becomes impossible because of the barriers that he has. What can we do to help Andile? Is there anything you can do to help Andile? Is Andile going to be left out of the ecosystem because of his circumstances? Can you help Andile? I try. And because of kids like Andile, I write stories of technology for kids so that stories, so that kids who don't have access to a piece of technology like Andile are able to pick up a book and read, engage with the content, and imagine what's possible through technology. To date, we have published three books, one being a technology alphabet, because when I started, I said, coding is a language, it's what, you, it's what unites us. And the second one being a coding encyclopedia. And those books have been translated into African languages so that Andile is able to engage with this content in a language that he understands. I am committed to debunking the myth that technology is a subject of the privileged and can only be taught in English. Sometimes we create barriers in how we teach technology, even through language. And the standing question is, what are you doing to save kids? Just like when I started, I said, when the Titanic sank, children were saved first. What are you doing in your spaces to save kids for the future? We work with schools, corporates, and nonprofit organizations in order to drive and push this work forward. 41% of jobs in South Africa will be rendered obsolete due to automation. Yet seven out of 10 kids have no access to technology or the internet. And the standing question tonight is, what can you do to help? Can you help these kids? We are surrounded by kids who can benefit from coding and being advanced in technology. What are you doing in your little corner? And today, I want us in our own spaces to introduce coding as a new African language. Thank you.